Hey, what's up everybody? We want to welcome you to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Daily Recap, where we give you a recap of all of the hot topics that we covered that day. You can catch them in their long format and also catch it fully streaming for free on Apple Podcasts. Let's get into this topic here. As you guys know, the playoffs are pretty much here. Games are going to start kicking off on Saturday. Although we don't know the schedule as of yet, yesterday there was some still some playing games, a game in which the Philadelphia 76ers were able to edge out the, um, what is it, the Miami Heat, but edge them out. They, they secured the 7 seed. They're going to be playing again, but obviously Jimmy Butler has an MCL uh, injury, so he's going to be playing. They're going to be playing against the Chicago Bulls to determine the eighth spot. I think that's going to be tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. So we have that news there. But one of the one of the most anticipated series going into the first round is going to be the series uh, between the or rematch rather between the Los Angeles Lakers and the Denver Nuggets who faced off last year uh, in the Western Conference Finals. And when those two teams matched up, obviously, we all saw there was a close they were close, pretty close games, some of them. But basically, the Denver Nuggets pretty much just dominated the Lakers in four games and they swept them up out of there. The most impressive game of that, of that entire series to me was game four where the Denver Nuggets looked like they really, really, really wanted to send home a message. Like, they didn't have to play as hard as they did, but they really wanted to send a message that we're on a totally different level, uh, and they went in there and totally dominated. So what happened this morning? I uh, was doing some research, kind of you know, preparing for today. Then I came across an interesting uh, piece of audio, uh, because as you guys know, they're interviewing players and coaches before and after practice, just kind of ramping up getting fans in the know, the media in the know, preparing for these games. So they were talking to Denver Nuggets head coach, Mike Malone. And they were discussing uh, the matchup between themselves and the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, And as he was talking, man, he basically started saying like, you know, we swept them before. We swept them last year. We swept them this year. You know, we really ready for them. Like, well, damn, tell us how you really feel. So for those of you who didn't hear what the head coach had to say about the Lakers, I want to play for you now and then come back and give you guys our thoughts. Take a listen to what Mike Malone had to say here. Obviously, it can be kind of circumstantial, but where are you at in terms of figuring out how deep into your bench you feel like you can go or want to go with, with this matchup? Yeah, we'll go as deep as we need. How can you feel the focus and intensity turn up now that it's playoff time and it's go time? Like, can you describe what that feels like around the team? Uh, I really can't. You know, I mean, it's like a feeling, you know, deep down inside. Uh, so how do you describe that? Uh, no, I think more importantly, like we have a veteran group. And as I told them, like when the play-ins are done, there's 16 teams in the postseason. And there's 15 teams trying to take what we have. We have to understand that. Like this is not going into round one, game one. They're like there's, there's a bullseye on our back even more so now. Like the, the league's been cut in half almost. And uh, we have a responsibility to understand that. The LA, is we, we swept them last year. We swept them this year. They're coming in, not only playing well, but really hungry. And they want to flip that script. And, and we have to understand that, Katie, and, uh, and bring that. And I think our players do. Uh, but that was our message today, man. Don't, don't let anybody in these playoffs take what we worked so hard to get. There hasn't been a back-to-back champion since 17, 18 in Golden State. And it's going to be a hell of a challenge. Uh, I've said this uh, for, for months now. The Western Conference playoffs are going to be insane. Uh, forget seeding. Uh, the number in front of each team, throw that out the window. There's going to be eight really talented teams, uh, and there's a number of teams that, that I think you know wouldn't be surprised coming out of the West because that's how deep and talented it is. So you heard what Mike Malone had to say uh, there, right? He didn't really... Um mince words. Then I came across an article here from fadeawayworld.net where it says Anthony Davis says Lakers are not ducking the smoke against the Denver Nuggets. Then continued on, the Lakers will face a familiar foe in the first round of the Western Conference playoffs and defeating them will be no easy feat. But even knowing the battles to come, Anthony Davis says the Lakers mindset is of total fearlessness coming into the highly anticipated series. If they beat us, they beat us. And uh, AD told the athletic, we're not ducking the smoke around the NBA. There's been a growing movement that says teams should try to arrange a certain first round matchup. Uh, to tip the odds in their favor. The Cleveland Cavaliers, for example, particularly through their final game uh, of the regular season to ensure a matchup against the Orlando Magic. And then the article uh, goes on to say a few other things. So AD and these guys, Darvin Ham, you obviously heard him say that people that are suggesting that they should have lost that game are coming from the insane, insane asylum. Uh, so it seems like these guys are really ready 
uh, they've they've basically come to terms with the fact that they're going to be facing against this behemoth uh, of a team. What are my thoughts? Well, we all know that Mike Malone is a fantastic uh, trash talker. We saw that last year at the championship parade and all of the various interviews he did like that on the Pat McAfee show. He trolls people, right? And I think it's hilarious. Uh, I think it's hilarious because he's, he, he, he gives uh, his team some attitude, right? Because, because Nikola Jokic is not that type of person. So he kind of fills in that gap for them. He talks on their behalf. Uh, some people don't like that, but obviously those are people that have sour grapes uh, that they ended up winning the championship. Look, uh, coming into this playoff series, I think um, Mike Malone is going to, going to need to give his team the edge. Uh, he's going to need to put a battery in their backs to get to understand that, hey, listen, uh, we're going to be playing against a potentially dangerous team. So you want to make sure that you're mentally dialed in going into this series. Uh, I made a prediction. My prediction for this series is that I think that the Denver Nuggets are not going to sweep the Lakers. If they sweep the Lakers, I'm going to be floored. Like, it'll be crazy. It'd be crazy because then essentially they would have swept the Lakers uh, 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 you know, on three different occasions in a year and a half. That's 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 madness. That's madness. Uh, so I don't think that would happen. I think, though, however, that Denver is going to win this series in five games. Here's my breakdown. I think Denver is going to hold court. I think they're going to win their first two games in Denver. Then I think maybe the Lakers are going to probably win game three. And then Denver may steal one game. I don't think the Lakers are good enough to steal a game in Denver. And then Denver will come out, come out uh, and close out the series in game five on their home court if the lakers drop game three it's a wrap they're going to get swept in four games but i don't see something like that happen or even it could go six who knows maybe the lakers could take a stand you know they could be rejuvenated last year some people said that they faced um the 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 the, the, the you know the eventual champions in the western conference finals when they were burnt out they didn't have enough fuel in the tank but this year they're going to be facing them in the first round so they're going to have more energy we shall see but what i can't say for what i can say uh, for, for, for a fact is that I like the energy uh, that Mike Malone is coming with, right? I like it. And I like the energy that, you know, Anthony Davis and these guys are coming with because trust me, I think they don't want to get embarrassed by this team. They definitely don't want to get embarrassed. And I think Denver is a team that can embarrass you. I think it's important that I state this from the onset based on the title that you've read. Um, we're not a political commentary uh, channel. We don't talk politics ever. Once or twice, I mean, here and there, you may see me post something on our community board. But generally, generally, we tend to stay away from these things. Now, I have toyed around with the idea of potentially in the future, one day, who knows, talking politics, although I've said historically I hate it, but I have not made that decision yet. And right now, that's not my focus. However, this particular topic is something that resonated with me. And I said, listen, I have to I have to share my, my thoughts um, on this particular issue. So what happened this morning? I was actually doing some research and I came across some various articles um, that were centered on U.S. sitting president Joe Biden commenting on Caitlin Clark's new WNBA uh, salary. And what he said uh, was something that really just, you know, it didn't it didn't resonate with me properly. Right. And it's something that really uh, that really bothered me because I thought that what he was saying was ridiculous. And I thought that a lot of what he was saying, he was doing it as in an attempt uh, to essentially pander. Right. I don't think it was coming from a place of anything genuine. The reason I say that is because when you follow when you listen to the reasoning, uh, behind this commentary, you know that, listen, this wasn't really well thought out. So let me get into this article. I want to read from People magazine. It says President Joe Biden's uh, comments on Caitlin Clark's WNBA salary says women are not paid their fair share. It continues on. Caitlin Clark's recent jump to the WNBA has garnered a lot of uh, fanfare this week, but the Indiana Fever star is not receiving the proper salary, according to sports critics and including President Joe Biden. Discussions were raised across the social across social media this week about women athletes and their salaries, particularly in the WNBA. After news broke that Caitlin uh, Clark's will make a total of $338,056 um, in her first four years in the league. Biden, who's 81, joined the conversation by posting on X uh, on April Tuesday, criticizing uh, the country's wage gap when it comes to women and men, pointing out Clark as a prime example of, of essentially this uh, disparity that exists. 
He says, women in sports continue to push new boundaries and inspire us all. But right now, we're seeing that even if you're the best, women are not paid their fair share. It's time we give our daughters the same opportunities as our sons and ensure women are paid what they uh, you know, d deserve. And then the article then continues on to say a few uh, other things you know, in terms of explaining the disparity in the wage, the, the wage gap and all of that, right? Let me tell you why that struck a chord. The reason why that struck a chord is not that I'm against women. That would be patently absurd, right? Married, my first child is, 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 is a girl, so that'd be ridiculous, right? I have a sister, I have many sisters. I have what, one, two, I have five sisters. So like, it'd be crazy. That's not the reason it struck a chord. The reason it struck a chord with me was it wasn't coming from a place of sincerity. There was nothing genuine about these statements. I know that if you put out statements like this to people that are primed up to just go out there and fight and argue and scream and holler and all of that, you know, the knee jerk reaction is going to be, yes, you see, why are women underpaid? Why is this? Why is that? And there's going to be very little room uh, for critical thinking and reasoning. So I decided to do a little bit of research here to really get, to, you know, get into the nitty gritty of this. I want you guys to just, to just bear with me while I give you guys some critical uh, information here. Let's talk about the revenue between the WNBA and the NBA. WNBA's revenue grew 233% in 2023 from 60 million in 2020 to 200 million, uh, 200 million in 2003. Uh, and before you think it, viewership is up 36% and attendance is up 16%. That's revenue. I wanna look at another, I wanna look at, uh, uh, yeah, I wanna look at another thing uh, there. In terms of the NBA, their revenue, they bring in more than $10 billion uh, annually. Uh, the WNBA brings in $200 million, and the NFL made nearly $20 billion. So we've answered the revenue question. Fantastic. Let's get to the viewership numbers. The NBA brings in, on average, 17,184 people in attendance in terms of their games. Whereas the WNBA, uh, in terms of attendance, brings in 5,676 people to watch their games. Let's look at the finals viewership. The 2022 NBA finals brought in 12.4 million viewers, while in 2022, the WNBA finals brought in 412,000 uh, viewers. Now let's get to the base salary. WNBA players made an average salary of $113,295, while NBA players make an average base salary of $9.7 million, uh, right? So if you listen to all of this information, you will then say to yourself, this is absolutely unfair. The women are being taken advantage of. Something must be done here. But the question most people are not asking is why does this exist? Why is this? Why does this exist? Does this, you know, current status quo exist because it was something that men created to harm women and cause them to earn less money? But that'd be patently absurd because you can't prove that. You can't prove that. So if it's not something that the men created for you to say they deserve to get what the guys make, why would you say they deserve it? The fact of the matter is the following. The men, for whatever reason, people have more interest in men playing basketball, or in this case, the NBA, than they do the, the WNBA. That's just the simple answer. And because there's more interest, the NBA is going to generate more revenue. They're going to have higher ratings. They're going to have more uh, uh, attendance in their games. Uh, ticket attendance makes, about, makes up about 30%, 35% of the revenue for some teams. So if you have 17,000 people attending a game on average a night, you're having more than three times the revenue every single night or even four or five because of the price of the tickets will be higher, obviously. But does that mean that the women are being treated unfairly? Well, no, it just means that there's more interest in men's basketball than there is in women's basketball. That's number one. Number two, why is it incumbent upon the men to do something? Number three, why is President Biden making it making it like 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 a like like a project for all of us to solve? If you want there to be a better uh, a wage gap, 
then more people need to support the league. I thought this was quite simple. And if you understand, if I understand it's at a rudimentary level, I'm sure the president understands that as well, which means that the only reason he went out there and said anything about this was to pander, which is the only reason anybody else. And, and, and listen, Marcelo Swally is a friend to the channel. I think he took an opposite position. I totally disagree with him on that particular point because it has nothing to do about who deserves more. You're going to get what the market yields. If you're selling a hundred dollar hamburger, nobody wants to buy it. You may consider dropping down the price. But if the next guy is selling a hundred dollar hamburger and he has better ingredients or whatever, whatever, they have a better ambiance, better restaurant, better marketing, and they buy it, tough luck. That doesn't mean you not need to earn the same as him because, well, we both made hamburgers. That's ridiculous. Ferrari and Ford both make cars, don't they? Why does a Ferrari cost more? Why does Ferrari have the highest profit margin of any car or automotive maker in the entire industry? Because Ferrari's Ferrari and Ford is Ford or the next car or Aston Martin is Aston Martin. But for him to say this, it just seems like 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 he's just trying to pander. That's the first. The second part is this. There's a lot of hypocrisy within this conversation. A lot of it, if I'm being quite honest with you. Here's the reason why. Do you know the reason why I'm saying this? Is because while people are running around hollering and screaming and twerking it up and knocking over drinks and slapping each other, talking about we, 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 women need to make more, blah, 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 blah. Where was all of this righteous, righteous indignation? When we're talking, where's all of this righteous, righteous indignation when we're talking about the wage disparity or the wage gap in, in, in the fashion industry? Oh, oh, you thought I wasn't going to bring that up? I want to quickly read from an article from Fashion Law uh, Journal. I want to quickly read from it here. It, ha it has the following headlines. Are female models paid more than male models? Continues on. Even if there's a continuous salary disparity between men and women, generally, there's at least one field where it's opposite, modeling. The gender wage gap has received a lot of attention, yet one sector of the economy openly discriminates against males, and that is the fashion sector. The gender pay gap in the fashion industry is a rare instance of an, uh, of an exception to the norm. Most fashion designers focus on women's wear. As a result, there is far greater demand for female models than for male models. Female models are more prevalent than male models, even uh, in ads, shots, and fashion shows. Thus, there isn't much of a comparison. Therefore, female models typically earn two to three times as much as male models. Male models may earn up to 75% less than female models, claims the industry insider Giselle Bunchen former wife of, uh, of, of, of Tom Brady, the highest pale female model in the world is a good example. Forbes reports that the Brazilian beauty earned $34 million last year. In contrast, according to the most recent information gathered about earnings in the male, uh, of the male models uh, in 2013, Sean Opry earned $1.5 million. According to the data from Forbes gathered over the last few years, female models earn millions more than their male counterparts, particularly when looking at the top 10 earners of each gender. The top 10 women models all earn millions of dollars according to her and only three male models earn more than one million dollars a year so why isn't joe biden president joe biden discussing this the reason he's not discussing this is because it doesn't garner any votes that's the reason he's not saying what he's saying because oh i love you and i love women no he's saying it to pander to get some damn votes which is pretty much what all politicians say do excuse me which is pretty much what all what all of them do I want to quickly close here on an article that I just got from Front Office Sports uh, this morning, which essentially says Caitlin, Caitlin Clark nearing a $10 million plus Nike deal. Days after be, uh, being taken first overall in Indiana Fever in Monday's uh, WMDA draft, Clark is expected to sign an eight-figure endorsement deal with Nike and get her own signature shoe, according to The Athletic. Clark had an NIL deal with Nike as a college player at Iowa, but it concluded at the end of her Hawkeye season, allowing her to hit uh, the market of her hit the height of her market or popularity she had a similar situation with uh fanatics but decided to uh, flip to uh panini ahead of her pro career so essentially uh in march industry sources estimated the athletic could could fetch one million in annual salary for her shoe deal so she's going to get a 10 million dollar shoe deal but that's not really what people are upset about people are upset about because they're busy looking at the fact that oh well nba players earn that much money they earn that much money so why aren't the women, because it's the same sport after all, well, quite literally, it's not, it is the same sport, but it's played totally differently, it's to, to, comprised totally differently. The, MB, the WNBA game is a totally different game than, than the NBA game. 
It totally is. So to me, the reason men earn more in this particular sector is because there's more interest. There's nothing diabolical about it. It's nothing about men sitting in a back room and saying, hey, man, how are we going to figure out a way to suppress these? It doesn't matter to them. I don't really believe it matters to them. If they want to see an increase in their salaries, the WNBA needs to figure out a way to increase the revenues because all of these points that they're bringing up, the question then becomes, so what exactly are you planning to do? Does the NBA need to siphon off a certain percentage of his revenues to the WNBA every year to, to, to inflate the, you know, the, the, the bottom line? And if that's what they need to do, the question then becomes, why? Why? The players are earning their keep. They're not stealing money. They're earning the money that the market believes that they're worth. So why would I now have to go give it to the next person? And if, it, if, and if we start, if we set that precedent, where does it stop? What does it stop? If I walk into a Starbucks and I, and, and I can afford to, be, to buy, what, 50 coffees and because I'm, I'm, I can do it. So that means well, I need to pay for the next people, the, the, the uh, other people there who can't afford more than just a coffee and a donut. I need to pay for them too. Well, you can afford it. So, I mean, why is it fair that he gets it? Because I, I have the money. <laughs> I have the money. There's certain people in high, you know, uh, highly specialized skills where they earn a boatload of money, buku money, buku money. What's next? NBA players are going to be looking at uh, soccer players to be like, hey, man, why do they earn so much money? Why can't like what is going on? So this is something that I 100 percent disagree with. This is all for uh, uh, politics and the garner votes because there's no sense behind it. You put out a statement that you get paid. What are boys? What are you talking about? What are boys? These people are going out there and working to earn this money. What are you talking about? Like, not like as if somebody just giving them this money. What our boys are earning. So who, so who, whose fault is it? This is what I want to know. Whose fault is it that the NBA players would that be absurd? So whose fault is it? If you want to blame something, blame the market. Because they clearly have more interest in the NBA than they do the WNBA. And inversely, people have more interest in the NFL than they do the NBA, hence the reason they make more money. So what's next? NBA players are going to be looking, well, well, why do they earn more money? Than I mean, after all, all athletes at the end of the day, why do they get to earn so much money? And then the, NBA, the NFL is going to sit down, well, you know, they are our brothers in sports, so we got to figure out, like, come on, like, we got to stop. These are my thoughts. I just think it's important that I close by saying this. This does not mean I'm endorsing a candidate or going up against, uh, going against, uh, you know, going against Joe Biden or anything. I just wanted to touch on this particular issue. I was thinking to myself, what do I classify, my, classify myself as, as a Republican Democrat? I'm not either one of those. I agree with certain views on various sides. Uh, this is not a political show. I just wanted to address this here because it, it was related to sports and I thought it was absolutely ridiculous.